6 o'clock. I'm uh, opening the uh, meeting of the Board of Sewer and Water Commissions for the Town of Walpole today on June 12th, being held here in the Finance Committee meeting room at Town Hall in uh, Walpole. The uh, meeting is going to be uh, have remote participation. And uh, under the open meeting law, uh, which remains in effect, um, I'm to read this statement uh, that uh, members can participate in the meeting remotely follow with the following requirements. The chair must announce the name of the member or members who are participating remotely. The individual who would be participating would be Commissioner uh, Jeffrey Fisher. All votes must be taken by roll call. Members of the public body must be clearly audible to each other to, and to members of the public at all times. When holding an executive session remotely, the public body must still take required procedural steps for entering into executive session and back into open session. I think that covers it. All right, we'll, hold, we'll uh, pause for a moment here. Steve. Thank you. <clears throat> so waiting, it's just waiting for the host to yeah, say. Yeah. So that didn't work. It didn't work. It <laughs> went, went back to the Walpole pool media. So if you like, we have the meeting open. Would you want to do correspondence or you want to wait for Jeff for a few more minutes? It's a pleasure of the commission. So I'd, I'd say we do the minutes and okay. get started. All right, we'll get started. First, we have uh, minutes for March 13th. Are there any? Um, I, I have a change. Yes, Bill. On the minutes of uh, March 13th, on page two, the, the third item, uh, Richard Russo, Buckboard Dried. And in the uh, text, it says, what would the approximate cost be to dig through his year to connect? It shouldn't be year, but. Yard. Yard. Other than that, looks fine. Unless anyone else has uh, any other corrections, I'd make a motion to. Um, approve the minutes of March 13th with that correction. All right. Is there a second? I second it. Second. Okay. There's a second. Pradeep. Uh, I would, in, in discussion, I'd just ask you, Bill, to look at the bottom of that page in correspondence. It's quoting you. Um, it, would you just look at that and make sure that's correct for, with a four-unit apartment buildings? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a four-unit uh, apartment. Okay, apartment. I just yes. want to confirm. Yep. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? You have to take roll. I'm not sure. That's right, we do. Asnol, uh, aye. Abbott, aye. Okay. Sadiq Mishra, aye. Asnol, aye. Okay, 400. Okay. Zero, zero. Zero. March 27th. Of course, the whole meeting has not been done. I didn't see anything. You know, who's holding if anybody, if no one else has a, uh, any changes, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 27th. I, oh. I was absent in that meeting, so. Okay, I'll second it. Any discussion? Okay, uh, Mr. Fasanello. Aye. Mr. Mishra. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Mr. Abbott. Aye. And Hassan Yeager, aye. Okay, so we have that one. Thank you. Now we'll go to uh, April 24th. Um, I have something, Mr. Chairman, that I'm not sure. I, it was on the superintendent's status report on the first page. Right. And that last, the, the well, in the middle, it says Rhodes Ave was complete with the exception of service tie-ins. South Street has begun in next 1700 for pressure testing. I just was not sure about that next 1700. Must be feet, but 
I don't know if Scott remembers that yeah, or not. That's correct. Feet. So be okay. Seventeen hundred feet. So. So it's seventeen hundred feet. I, I, it's interesting, Bill. I marked the same thing. Yeah. I saw that too. Um, okay. Mr. Anything, Good Chairman? Yeah. Um, on the page two about monthly billing discussion. Um, so we postponed the monthly billing uh, discussion until all the commissioners are in the uh, meeting. The second motion was to get the vendors who can sub do monthly billing um, by July 31st. So the date is missing. The motion made by Mr. Fasnando and seconded by Mr. Hasnagar to have told the minister to generate a list of vendors regarding monthly billing by July 31st, 2023. Okay, so that comes in at the end after next meeting. No, where does that where does that? No, come so in? the actual motion I remember, which we made, we um, instead of uh, uh, you know the first motion, which was to have the monthly uh, billing done by September first. There was a second motion, which was to basically have the vendor's name by July thirty first. Okay, so that motion really isn't mentioned here. So the, uh, there are two motions. There are two motions. Okay, yeah. the motion two, Mr. Fastenal seconded. It doesn't say what it was. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. so it doesn't say the date by by July 31st. Okay, so by, yeah. before Mr. Fastenal, by yeah. July 31st. Do you, do you see what we're talking about? Okay. All right. Sure, it goes it by seconded or at the end? In the end. At the end, yes. So after the words regarding monthly billing by July 1st, 2020. That yeah. would seem to make more sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll read, read it for you, Barbara. Just, just uh, uh, so motion made by Mr. Fashnalo, seconded by Mr. Hasnager, to have town administrator, give town administration to generate a list of vendors regarding monthly billing by July 31st, 2023. Thanks. Okay. Um, we're we're in Zoom here. Yeah. I don't know if, if anybody has joined. So, um, yep. oh, Jeff and is there's here. Jeff. Jeff is here. That Jeff? I thought that was Duck Dynasty. <laughs> so you would want to announce that uh, he has joined the meeting, I think. Okay. Jeff, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Jeff, uh, F Commissioner Jeff Fisher has joined the meeting. Now it's uh, approximately six, uh, 608. Unless there's any further changes, I'd make a motion that we approve the minutes of April 24th with the two changes uh, mentioned in our discussion. Okay, so moved, second? I, say, I second it. Okay. Um, Mr. Fastenello? Aye. Uh, Mr. Mishra? Aye. Mr. Abbott? Aye. Mr. Fisher? Abstain. I didn't, that wasn't part of the conversations. And Hassenjager? Aye. Okay, so it's 401. Well, okay, so we have the superintendent's so report. Yeah, uh, this is, we're talking about April 24th, right? Yes. Um, did you vote yes? Yes. Were you there? April 24th, I take that back. I should vote abstain. Yes. Okay. So, three, zero, so three, it's 302. Three, zero, two. Okay. Now we could do the, the superintendent's report, Scott, please. So since the last meeting, uh, there have been no leaks or breaks other than one that was construction related. We had a six inch water line with a circle crack on Sherwood Drive that was broken as part of the construction taking place. MDI was compacting a trench and uh, that break occurred, they repaired it. South Street has been completed since the last meeting and the contract has moved on to Walnut Street. Right now they're about halfway down the street, so they're making good progress. The hydrant flushing program continues. Uh, as I said last time, we're going to continue as long as we can, and then we have the water to do so, as well as hydrant maintenance and hydrant painting. And routine tasks. Did you say hydrant painting? 
Yeah, there's some that are in rough shape. It's just, we do this every year oh. in the summer. Is um, Chandler and Conifer on the list, or have yeah. they been addressed? Uh, I, they are on the list. Oh, good. Okay. How long do you flush when you're, when you're flushing a hydrant? As long as it takes. So we want Does to the collar sure. go by the what's coming out? Yeah. I mean, if you have a short dead end, likely you're not going to flush it as long. If it's discolored, you're not going to stop flushing until it clears up. So it's a case-by-case -case basis as they're flushing. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Sure. I've requested to see the written uh, superintendent's report before. I, I would like to see it in our package up to date to that point in time and anything else that comes in we can get that orally but I need to have that uh, you'll have it in, in the package right yes. thank you okay so um, we could get to the uh, correspondence uh, we want to go through the uh, <coughs> Mr. Abbott uh, we have revenue numbers here the item uh, versus pump, uh, pumping numbers. Yeah, one versus pumping. Yeah. So the pumping numbers are high than last year for all the yeah. first five months. Yeah, I could ahead. just make it, Barbara. If if they're the thing I send, if it's, it has color in it, if you could print it in color. Nope. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, it says red and black, but there's no, but the other thing I would ask, and may, I may be the only one, the print is so small, I had to get a magnifying glass to read this. Is it, I don't think there's any reason to print. If you on, could blow only, these well, up, I know Mr. This. Abbott probably gives you, because he's so detailed, he probably has I, I microscopic. Could, I could turn uh, it so that it's landscape. Exactly, yeah. well, landscape and blow it up 2X. How's that? Just first. Well, I'll bl blow it up as big as it uh, fit, will page. fit on a page. Hit the page. Yeah. yeah. I would appreciate it. Thank you. So, so going to the pumping numbers, I think uh, to January to May, every numbers are higher than last year. We're pumping more waters, um, so that that should also give us an idea that we are going to get more revenue than budgeted for it. If I, if I could, that's not necessarily true. Okay, just because you're pumping more doesn't necessarily mean that you're billing for more. Scott just alluded to the fact that they're doing the flushing hydrant. That is accounted for in the pumpage, however, it's not built. Okay, and then okay. how well, much? How much? It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. So no, how much? It's is not it? a direct correlation. It's 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 a part of the the equation, but it's. Just because you pump two gallons more doesn't mean you're going to bill for those two gallons, is my point. Yeah. Okay, I, I would counter that to say that um, in, the, in the genre of the recent data, we have had a number of new residences built in the town of Walpole, and we've had a number of uh, uh, hookups of utilities. And I think as a result of that, I would think that correlation in my book would be much higher the correlation between the new residences, the new number of accounts, and increased sale of water than in the flushing. Again, I would res respectfully disagree because those complexes have been online for three years. Yeah, but I, I think that one of the things, and Pat, you brought this up, yeah, that um, you've noticed that there's a lot more people around your neighborhood during the day and people who would be working from home um, and obviously they would uh, be using water at home that normally might have been used in, in an office as a result of the pandemic. Um, of course, it'll be interesting to see now that you're hearing that a lot more companies are asking either them to totally come back or come back with two days a week or that sort of to see. Um, also, during that period of time, we um, during the summer last year, we had um, a drought, um, as well as uh, very uh, many days above 90, which uh, in the past has equated to uh, increased water use, regardless in, of in the management. In recognition of the fact that Pradeep brought up, if, if you look, I believe we adjusted the cubic footage from 76 to 78. In, in for the FY24, right. yes, that's something yes. that we've So, but, yeah. 
So, so but the numbers are like 120% above the last year. That means are we losing more than 20% water from the last year? Losing 20%? Yeah, the, losing, the numbers are losing. like from the last year pumping numbers, this year numbers are 20% higher. Every average is higher. Are we losing 20% of the We're losing pumps? losing 11%. Yeah, so, so the, that means the, it's going to the consumptions. I'm not talking about the usual. I'm talking about the numbers which are given here. And this year numbers are higher than the past three years. Okay. I would still caution you against no. weighing heavily upon that. No. That's Thank just my you. opinion. Thank you. Okay, uh, anybody else on the revenue or the? Okay, thank you. That's uh, correspondence one and two. No, on the two, uh, okay. the two, the comments is like uh, the budget was uh, six million dollar for the water, and we already made a six point eight million dollars so far, and this is until end of May, isn't it? Yes, yeah. end of May. So there's one more month missing. So we have $800,000 more, which may go to the retained earning. And the, similarly, I think on the sewer, we have um, five, it's 5.5 million, both are same. So we already got the revenue for the year and still have one month to bill. So that's the comment. Okay, very good. Anybody else? Thank you. Okay, moving on for, uh, to the discussion items. The hour being uh, 618. We have uh, a letter here from 225 General Edwards Highway, Sharon. This is from uh, Mr. Noonan, and it's an inquiry uh, regarding uh, the potential of um, hooking up to Walpole Utilities, primarily sewer, uh, at the location of 225 General Edwards Highway in Sharon, which, as the letter points out, is the abutter to Lexus dealership, the Herb Chambers uh, d uh, dealership. So this is an FYI, I believe. Uh, um, I. I suspect what the town administrator uh, forwarded this to us, and I think the reason is possibly to uh, not just FYI, but for us to be thinking about whether that's something you want to entertain or have someone come in on or, uh, but I, I would suspect that if uh, out of courtesy of uh, just uh, economic development reasons and good business reasons, if someone does have a specific proposal you know, I, I don't think we would object to having them come in and making a presentation some future date. I, I think these people, um, if they have uh, a proposal, should come before us, tell us what it is. Right. I, I just hey, have John. a question. Um, Sharon's not a member of the MWRA, and could we even do that if we wanted to? Well, to, to answer your question, it depends. Is there a reason for us to give them, with, well, the water connection is obviously not their problem. If the sewer connection will be beneficial to the environment, mm -hmm. let's say, now I don't know, this is um, area what? Probably two. Two. And if septic in that area would be detrimental, then there'd be a case for the MWRA saying, they could connect to their sewer. But and there may be some other reasons too, I don't know. But, uh, you know, uh, so there's no yes or no answer to that. Um, but they can't do, ever do it without the permission of the town. That's one thing, that, that's one of the big things in the law. And when this whole NWRA started, the local towns have that um, right. Is the Lexus dealership not in Sharon? It is in Sharon. Okay, so there's your answer. Anything can be done with, with the prop, taken through the proper channels. Well, my, my second question would be related to uh, Herb Chambers. I, I was not on uh, the board when we made the deal for them to get water and, and sewer. 
So I don't know, would, would they, this uh, proposal 225, uh, would they be hooking up to a main that uh, was put in, and I don't know what the arrangement with the, the Lexus deal was that, yes, you can have it, and they said, but every pipe that we put in is exclusively used for us. Uh, you know, you, I could see them saying, because didn't they pay us money for uh, a special entrance fee? That Was there any conditions that might preclude? Uh, yeah. um, on the Lexus dealership, if you want to know some of the ins and outs of that, um, they were, uh, they came to us, um, the commission at that time saw our benefit in that we could extend the sewer up one of the streets and connect houses along the way, so we would extend our sewer system yeah. also. Uh, unfortunately, the people didn't want sewer, but we had made that deal, so they brought it a different way, which I think there's no houses that in that connection. Correct. But that, but the deal was that it was going to um, get some houses that were in, they were kind of in a, a hollow that they would have had municipal sewer with the pumping station, the whole bit, and they declined it, which I still don't know why. So uh, it was probably the yeah. betterment. Huh? Probably the betterment was too high. No, there was no betterment. Well, there was no betterment. No, this was, this was in order to connect to the sewer, Herb Chambers had to go buy some residences. Yeah. They would have they would have connected these houses completely gratis. I think it would have been this similar to you open you create a subdivision, you put the sewer in, there's no betterments because it's not the town who's paying but, putting but, the sewer in. Would, the developers in this case they would have brought the sewer right into their house. Oh yeah. So they they still would have had to pay yeah, so the connection were, yeah. fee but they would not and they would have repaved yeah. the yeah. Uh, the, the street. So, so th that was part of the deal. Anyway, so the commissioner at that time thought that was, plus they'd pay us some, uh, a, a rather hefty price for that, if you remember that. that. Okay. Um, no one remembers there being a, a, any sort of conditions that might preclude um, somebody else using that sewer line, and I'm not even sure how they would uh, in, well, try to use it. The sewer line that goes through Herb Chambers yeah. um, just ends. I mean, yeah. that's it. It doesn't go anyplace else. They, they don't own any property adjacent to it or anything. Well, this property is adjacent. That's, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how that now, line... What are you saying? Do you think they're going to connect to Herb Chambers and oh. bring it through that way? I believe Herb Chambers is a forced line. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't apply. Anyways, I, I'm not in favor anyways, but I'm just curious. Well, if they I'd were. like to hear what they have to yeah. offer, uh, what, the, what they want, and okay, what well, they're going to plan to build there. So we'll respond back to the town administrator that yeah, what the like, status is. The appointment. Yeah. Okay. Then we have uh, revised plans for off Warwick Road. I think that's a two-lot thought. Do we have the plan for Warwick Road? So what's a revision? It's on sheet seven, the details for the water line that um, is sleeved under the culvert and insulated. It's on sheet seven.
Um, if you look at this this plan here, I see lot B, lot A, two R, and one R are already developed. Is that correct? Somebody know that answer? Okay. There's, there's, on this plan you gave me, there's lot B, there's lot A. Lot A has 3.63 acres. Lot B has 0.92 acres. And there appears to be two lots here that are form A's on Summer Street. Well, it, it, those are resident. It looks like they're, they're the owners of okay. people living um, in those. I, and I see on this map, at least, um, there's a, an easement going to Summer Street from the cul-de-sac at Warwick Road. Uh, and I don't, I don't understand what the house is going to be built here and how it's going to connect to the sewers. There you go, right there. This, this one here, Bill. Seven. Look on this one. Isn't there, isn't there a foundation here somewhere? It's a, this is a proposed. The, it's a culvert, but it's... Going. Yeah, but he wants to know pro, proposed where the... This so, sheet here has the proposed houses. All right, so no, no concern about the, uh, them saying that they would provide the information on the final plan regarding the culvert and insulation. Yeah, see this... that... See, it shows right here. The, the, these are the two houses. Yeah. It's right here. That's okay. And it's going to connect to the sewer some this way, right? That's the water service. Yeah. And that's the sewer service. So this one here is sewer, this one's water. With the W's and this one has S's on it. <clears throat> okay, and this proposed dwelling, you see the S's on that? I think this is uh, proposed sewer services right oh, here. Right there, okay. Yeah. All right, so what do they want from us here? Well, I think that the... Uh, and what's the The change? engineer is, refer is responding to the uh, town engineer's comments, and the one related to water was point number 25, provide detail for sleeve and insulation for water main below culvert, and it's saying revised water main shown on section. That's why I was looking to see where this culvert was and where the water, um, yeah, the water main would be below it. Thank you. Also, when you look at the the front and locust map, okay, this locust here, uh, you see Stony Brook Road, mm -hmm. it's a dead end. Um, Boyden Road is a dead end. I don't know what road this is, but it's a dead end. It would be to everybody's benefit if we could get some easements to connecting these pieces up here. So that would be my concern on this particular situation. So it's like a it's like a, a dead end in here. Do you want to propose so, the planning like, board is asked forwarding our comments to the planning board? So if you wish to make, yeah, I'd like that to be a comment. Is nope. that possibility of utility easements from Boyden Road, Stony Brook Road, or well, those are the only two I can see. That would be a benefit to everyone here. It would give them 
two ways to get their water and it would get the town, uh, the grid would be completed. That's my it's comment. It's coming. Okay. Anybody? I think that's, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, oh, Pat, uh, did you want to make a motion to, and what were your comments well, that they suggest? I don't think we need motions for comments, but if you want, you think we should? Do you think well, we should? Are, 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 oh, I move then we make a comment concerning easements. To the planning board. The planning board is the one who's asking yeah, for comments. Yeah, okay, that's it. In other words, to improve our water distribution system yeah. and to give these people redundancy in that area. And you want to name the four streets that you're talking no, about? I don't the know. Three? There may be other ones that I'm, I, okay. I can't see them all on the map here. All right. But I'd just like to see, you know, we do these things and then 20 years from now we are kick ourselves for not uh, having uh, the ability to do these things. Now's the time to do it if we're going to do it. Great. All right. Um, 6.30. I don't know. You want to... Uh, oh, is Jeff still with us? Yep. He is. All right. You want to just finish off Jarvis and... Meet the cash. Okay. Are there uh, anything on uh, Jarvis Farm? Not since the last meeting, no. Nothing at all. Not since the last meeting. It's just sitting there, being polluted. Okay. Hey, Scott, can we get um, Brendan to come before us and talk to us about declaring the uh, some of those cabin surplus, or at least which ones we have identified? Yes, yeah, so that was requested at the last meeting as well, and I do have that. Um, the week that that, that occurred, uh, he was not available. I will set that up. They're not going anymore. Uh, Jim, I need your signature. Submission has to be from our agent. Okay. So if you can just sign that, she'll make copies that we are working on. Sure. All right, are we done with that item or? But anything on Zara's phone? Patrick, are you all set on Jarvis phone? On Jarvis? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see some movement here. I mean, you know, the longer we wait, it doesn't, it doesn't get any better. Uh, and there's no reason to keep waiting. Uh, there was a something last time we, they talked about a grant. What's the status of that? A grant for Jarvis farm? Is there any, there was a, a, if you look at the minute, there was something about a grant getting some money to help us, you know, make the place environmentally safe from the parking aspect? It, it, I think that's nothing? No, I'll put my notes about that. I don't recall the grant. I think no, we, we were unsuccessful in getting the grant. It was filed okay. through conservation, I believe. So uh, we are going to put in a capital improvement request. Is that in? The capital improvement requests are due on the 15th. I can't hear you. They do on the 15th. Please. The improvements are due on the 15th, and that will be in there. Okay, thank you. Well, I've got a question. Is it is the uh, Recreation Department going to participate in this at all financially in the upgrades of the uh, recreational use of Jarvis Farm? Or I don't think anybody here can answer that. Well, I, we were supposed to have uh, what's... What's right. the gentleman, Mr. Crook? Right, and to... He was supposed to come in. We never did come right. in. Right, Commissioner but, Fisher just said that. He, he and Scott just discussed that a minute ago. He's, uh, Brendan had a conflict the last time Scott asked him to come in. Um, we'll get him on the one of the upcoming agendas. Okay, yeah, be good. Just so we're on the same page. Thank you. I didn't hear that. Was... Uh, okay, meter to cash, meter in, uh, to cash report. I was still on schedule with that. Do you have the copy of uh, current one? We needed it for 
today's discussion actually i don't have a copy no so can we assume that lag time is still more than 30 days it, right now we're, we're still on on track so 30 to 35 days of lag time it's just okay. it can't come from a commissioner they had a little bit of issues with um, yeah. migrating to the new muni system okay. you're the man they overcame that and they stayed on on schedule okay yeah, once in a while, I think we need a copy of it so that we can see how much lag are going on different billing cycle. Thank you. Okay. All set. Can we uh, have me open the... Uh, I don't have to do anything with Zoom on this. We're just going to open the rate hearing. All right. We're opening at... Uh, they are being past 6.30. We're opening the... Uh, Board of Sewer and Water Commission uh, rate hearing. I can present something on the screen that's basically what if, uh, I don't know if that will not. Uh, I'm not sure if it should be a roll call vote to uh, open the Thank hearing. you. Thanks for that. Yeah, it should be. We're, we're, we're going to uh, move to a uh, uh, rate hearing. So I'm going to ask Mr. Fastnell, you vote in favor of that? I do, yes. Okay. Fastnell, yes. Mr. Mishra? Yes. Mr. Abbott? Yes. Mr. Fisher? Yes. Okay, and Hassan Yeager, yes. yes. So that would be uh, Barbara 500. <clears throat> okay, so we have uh, in front of us the uh, proposal. You won't here. need to present it on the uh, screen there, John. We do have two people who are in our audience. Uh, well, it's up. If you think you're more comfortable with their information, you can present it, or the, the <coughs> treasurer or whoever can present, whoever wants to present it. Uh, it's a recommendation to the commissioners. I can, I can give my copy to you, uh, and I think, Jody, you've seen it, so. This is the the presentation. It's in your packet, not the not the rates themselves, but from Bill Abbott. It says in there this that turn that over. I was prepared to present if we had a large audience, like we have had at some point, and sometimes not. So, I'm okay, Jim. Do you anybody want to present this uh, from your team or? This for your team? Okay. All right. I've had it since last week, so. Yes. All right. Well, um, as uh, our folks in attendance know, the uh, both sewer and water uh, our systems are self-funded. And the first thing that I wanted to uh, go over was just to, uh, before looking at the proposed rates, was just to see what the rates must uh, cover. And the first thing was the, the water, uh, FY24 water and uh, expense, as well as the revenue. And I was going to explain what the uh, wages and salaries were. Those are the people who work uh, directly in the department. The operational expense uh, line is uh, the day-to-day the -day operational needs, uh, uh, electricity, uh, treatment chemicals, things like that. Those are the uh, largest items, both electricity and the uh, water treatment uh, chemicals. Long-term debt is uh, where we're paying off uh, debt for large projects, similar to the uh, project that uh, uh, Scott uh, gave us an update on where we're replacing old water mains, and of course others. And the indirect costs are, uh, um, these are uh, cases where uh, functions that are the water department doesn't handle are covered by other departments and examples are um, certainly the collector's office does the billing and the collection uh, vehicle maintenance uh, in the public works department maintains our vehicles um, the employees uh, certainly need and have access to uh, personnel services and we've seen the list the whole list of the indirect uh, costs um, the uh, total of 6,134,619 is a 1.3% increase um, from last year. 
And uh, just a, an interesting note was that the expenses, which is uh, 1.9 million, it was up 14.5% from last year. And as Scott has mentioned a number of times, it's been a result of the dramatic increase in treatment uh, uh, chemicals. In the opposite direction, the uh, long-term debt uh, cost, which is 1.7 million, is actually 11% less than it was the previous year. And the reason for that is, is that we last year made the final payment for the Willis treatment plant with some supplemental wells, and, and that money came off. Of course, as we're doing additional projects in subsequent years, that will start to uh, increase. And the only other thing I was going to mention on revenues, it's uh, clear that um, while we have a number of items that uh, come in with some miscellaneous uh, revenues, the bulk of the revenue is coming from uh, user uh, charges. Okay, well, ordinarily we have, uh, uh, just what you would say, we have a historical column where we can see the percentage of change right. up or down on each item. We don't really have that here, but. Uh, on the, uh, the next page would have been the sewer expense and revenue, and mm -hmm. the sewer uh, expenses follow the same pattern as the water system um, does, with one big exception. Um, in the case of water, it's, it's a total local operation. It's our water, we get it out of the ground, we treat it uh, and, and distribute it. We have a very small sewer department and that's because the MWA does our, the treatment of all our waste. Um, and as a result, the MWA assessment dominates uh, expenses and also uh, dominates uh, what we end up having to uh, uh, set for a rate in, uh, increase. So of the, uh, the total, uh, for expenses is $5,875,337, and that's uh, a 5.6% uh, increase uh, over the last year. The MWA um, increase was 5%. So you can see that basically it's the MWA that um, uh, accounts for the bulk of our expenses. And again, on revenues, just like uh, water, there's a number of miscellaneous items, but the uh, um, user charges, the 5.3 million, is again the bulk of the um, revenues that we uh, use. On the, the next page um, was the proposal for rates for FY24. Um, the proposed rates would continue to use the inclining block rates. I believe this is our fourth or fifth year of doing that. Um, where essential uh, water use gets lower rates, uh, non-essential use as well as uh, high volume users get uh, higher rates and uh, we're billing quarterly. Um, for the Walpole water users, we're proposing a 1% increase, which is the lowest increase in many, many years. Um, and it breaks down the uh, four tiers, what our current FY23 rate is and what it would go up um, after increasing for, by 1%. Uh, the same would apply to the irrigation wells, and I would have explained what that would be, those cases where uh, users who are on sewer have irrigation systems, who um, their water that goes into their irrigation system never gets into the sewer, and we offer the ability to have a second meter so that uh, they don't end up paying for uh, um, sewer for water that never gets there. On the out of town, again, uh, in, uh, increasing by 1%. And I was just going to say that we have very few out of town users. Most of those customers were added 30 and 40 years ago. Um, and uh, in the past, recent past, anyways, the Sewer and Water Commission has not expressed interest in supplying water to customers outside. The final item is the fire suppression assessment. This was something we added last year. It was one, a flat rate of uh, $500. And based on a fairness complaint that we mentioned in our, uh, the minutes there where we had a uh, small apartment uh, um, owner who uh, was surprised getting a $500 bill. And what I had suggested and the board seemed to like was to, uh, um, with a little bit of the same revenue, but uh, um, have three different rates, uh, one for the small 
uh, user, which was a diameter of two inches or less on the pipe, and medium three, four, and six inch would pay 500, and the large users eight and above would pay a thousand dollars. And oh, because make, it's printed here, a hundred. Yes, I, and that's why I was about to. The one that I proposed, I, I noticed that to this morning and, and changed that. So actually, it ends up bringing a slightly increased amount of revenue, but basically uh, about the mm -hmm. same. Well, can I, while we're on this, for a yeah. second. Um, when we talk about fire suppression assessment, mm -hmm. now, in my mind, we're talking about non-residential units. Right. And we're talking, um, and if they are residential units, they're multi, you know, um, family units. Well, I like, think, John, you were saying like it, over three. It, for, it was only for commercial. So... Not for if some if a resident wanted to have a sprinkler in their house, that you were not interested in assessing them. But I would think a, an apartment or a warehouse or whatever that would be a commercial operation, and that they would be uh, charged. Could I suggest something here? That I know what you're saying. I know what John is saying. Perhaps if it's a three-family or less, their assessment will be nothing. Anything over for residential, if they're over a, Four it's a building, yeah. okay, because the whole building catches on fire. If it's over three units, then they should be assessed, um, like you say, 100 bucks a, a year. Or based on the, the pump size. I mean, if it's 152 units in, uh, you know, Liberty Village. Well, that's another point. They, they saying, I'm sure, probably have okay. a larger uh, well, well, diameter what pipe. I, what size pipe do they have in there? Off the, I, I had got a list from Mary, oh, and that's how so I broke down. A, 500 out of the 1,000. They'll be uh, more than, yeah, they, they'll need a medium-sized pipe. They're, if it is they're probably a medium, or certainly they're not a small. Okay, but a, but a, a single-family house or a three-family house? I would think would be, um, they were like a, a one-inch, a one-and-a-quarter, and a two with the small ones, and I remember looking, I think there was, might have been only one that the address appeared to me to be a, a single family home. Uh, the rest seemed to be apartments or, uh, or commercial they, buildings. They should be exempt if they are a residence and they're not a big commercial building. So if you're suggesting no, but, that... But if, uh, they, words, if they're not, if they're they, not a commercial building, they will not need this fire suppression. If you have a single family house and you decide to put a fire suppression in, so that will go through the meter, right. isn't it? After the meter. So after separate. the meter. Huh? That will be after the meter. Yeah. yeah. So okay. there should not be any charge. Right. So but if they don't have a meter connection but they have a separate fire have, suppression system, then it, sh it should be paid. For a single family house? If they're no. converting, if, if they have <clears throat> single family house a meter, they don't have to pay. But if they, they they need a fire suppression system because now they're running a doctor office or some other oh, thing. Oh, 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 okay, yeah, yes. If they put commercial in, yes. that's a whole different story. Yeah. We're talking about just residential. residential. So if it's less than the three units, if residential, three, purely if residential. If it's three or less. Three or less. I don't think that that will make a change significantly in the revenue. I don't think so, so either, but just to get it clear. All right, so three yeah. or less. Uh, resident, purely residential, would be excluded. Yeah. Okay. Excluding any commercial activity, like on the bottom floors or yeah, excluding. Like that. Okay, no commercial. Okay. I don't say no commercial. It, it probably should say commercial fire suppression assessment, uh, including residential units more than three. All right. Yeah, uh, do it that way. <clears throat> Okay, and, commercial and residential is exempt or uh, commercial including uh, residential th uh, greater than three units, yeah. greater than three units. Okay. Next would be um, proposed uh, twenty twenty. No, ask one more question. Okay. How is that going to affect your re your budget on that? Very minor, because they would be in the one hundred dollar uh, case. So, and in fact. Uh, when we originally put this, it was um, $50,000 was what we were getting. There actually turned out to be a few more than the, the 100, and so I think what we're proposing would be uh, 58 
thousand. So knocking off two or three things at a hundred isn't going to make a difference. And one last thing. Your so I think you said that that last time. But go ahead, Pat. No, but then I thought of something. <laughs> yeah. And, go ahead. Uh, I just want to congratulate you on working out that. Uh, well, that thank you. You sent to me last Oh, time. yes. You wanted. And that was uh, excellent. And I also want to congratulate you and Dr. Hassan and Jacob for winning their elections. And thank you for that, too. Okay. The next thing would have been the proposed uh, FY 2024 sewer rate. And as I mentioned earlier, the sewer rate is really driven by the, what the MWA sewer assessment is. And the proposed increase is 5%. Um, and also, we're uh, also proposing to change the percentage of the water use as a substitute for sewer volume. Um, uh, last year, we were um, using as a volume 85% of the um, water use. And we were bringing that up, proposing to bring that up to 87.5%. And uh, again, the exception with the folks who have a second meter for irrigation, they're already paying 100%. And one of the things that I was going to mention was that what we've uh, learned with, from the MWA's rate survey that uh, many of the communities, in fact, probably well over uh, the majority, are going at 100% of uh, water use. So this, uh, and when we usually had 80%, um, that really was way too low anyways. Um, so those were the two things, 5% increase on the rate, but the amount of water would be going, uh, that we would uh, base that rate against, would be going from 85% to 87.5%. The other so, thing so that- So I'll just interrupt you there. So essentially, while well, you're saying that the increase for the sewer uh, customers is 5% in, 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 in actuality, the increase you'll, to you'll their pocketbook is 8%. Yeah, you'll see that on the, on the next page, John, where the yep. net is uh, um, 8%. But the I, other thing- I want to uh, interrupt here. The, the, your statement about the MWRA communities charging 100% is incorrect. Uh, many communities have a tiered system for sewage. That is the, the case, but it's how much you're, you, how do you determine where it would go in a block? So, so the so most they, of the commercial pay higher rates and the residential pays lo, low rates. So we, I, I'm not proposing at this point that we go to a tiered system. That would take a little bit of no, work, which is and that's fine. something but, that we but could But the do. statement that uh, most of the communities are charging 100% of the water rates right. to uh, sewer is, is, is incorrect. That's what I'm All right. Well, I'll, I'll stand corrected, but yeah. they, most of the communities, we were an outlier uh, and I believe Quincy was another who didn't use all the water that uh, came in as uh, on the assumption that it all went into the sewer. Okay. That, that is uh, something that, um, anyways, going further, um, something I added, because I sent this in, into uh, Barbara, I think it was on Wednesday. Uh, as far as the presentation, I added the um, septage rate, that the current rate is eight cents, the uh, sewer proposal is suggesting that we go to 6% for FY24. And uh, again, the reason was that, uh, as you're aware, uh, last year we raised the rate from 7 to 8%. And the effect of it is that the haulers, which are private businesses, they have uh, options of where they can discharge the uh, septic system waste. And we started to uh, lose some of that volume. Um, so to, um, what we, we've already had a discussion of this uh, earlier this uh, year, and this is something that Jeff was uh, interested in, um, of lowering the rate to 6%. We also increase the hours that the septage facility is open, uh, attempting to um, get back the volume that we had and possibly increase the volume. It is something that uh, is a profitable uh, operation. It is something that uh, is included in the uh, sewer system uh, rates. I, I have a comment there. Uh, I think the septic uh, revenue collections are totally uh, different. Um, in 2020, I see there was 256,000 collection. In 2021, it dropped to 196, and now it's 203. So I, th I think we, we have very variable uh, what do you call charges, revenue coming from that system. 
and uh, reducing the charges will not, the customer won't benefit. Customers, if they have paying a higher price, the vendors are not going to give it back to the customer. Um, I think the inflation will catch up with them. So I I am against the, any uh, changes to that uh, rate system, especially seeing that uh, if the rate was lower in 2020, we made 256, the rate was lower in 2021, we made only 196. So if the variable is not the rates, it's the haulers, not us. So it's, it's your... No, I understand. I, I, it is something, and I don't know, Jeff, are you still on the line? Yeah, I'm still here. Would you want to comment on this, or uh... yeah, I mean, we we surveyed you know most of the haulers out there that are not, that are using the facility, as well as haulers that aren't using the facility. Asked them why they weren't. Um, you know, a lot of it had to do with where they were hauling from, not being MWRA. A lot of it had to do with the hours that it was staffed, uh, difficult to make appointments, things of that nature. But we also looked at where they were hauling to, and how much um, those other facilities were charging. And you know some of those facilities were down in the six, six cent range. Um, you know we're trying to be competitive. Um, you know it's a it's a revenue generating. You know it's a profit center. It can be anyway. Um, and you know um, you know whether it whether it's seven cents or six cents. Um, you know it's it's revenue for us. So um, yeah, that's where I'm at. All right. Uh, well, I think what we'll do is we'll uh, just see at the six cents, and if there is not. A majority that uh, for that we can stay at the eight or we could oh, go back to seven or whatever but I've made a note of it here the uh, next uh, slide and if I was presenting this what I did add was a uh, a chart that showed the distribution of uh, our customers um, but anyways this this chart um, shows what the actual impact of we the didn't get that chart you did you I can see it that's it. You didn't, you didn't get the, uh, the graph that I added oh, would present, okay. uh, but, and it was really more it's, to it's, show where um, these uh, uh, four different uh, uh, typical users showed up as in the distribution, and I can uh, send that out to, to you. But um, in the, it had four different columns. The first one uh, wrote, showed what the uh, existing rate, the FY23 rates, and, um, and then the middle one, uh, uh, the second one in, showed the effect of the proposed rate, water, uh, an increase of 1% in the sewer, an increase of 5% uh, in the rate, as well as making the adjustment of the, uh, how much water we include into the calculation. The third column just shows the actual dollar change, and the fourth is just the percentage. So the, what I did is, uh, and I did this the same, uh, um, typical uses. The first one was uh, 12,000 cubic feet and a quarter. Uh, they clearly feel, fit into tier one. Um, last year, if they were just a water customer, uh, they would have paid $65.34. Under the proposed FY24, uh, it would be $65.99. And looking at the next column, an increase of $0.65. Cents. Um, if they if they were a sewer customer, I break out the uh, uh, cost of sewer and using that same 1,200 uh, um, cubic foot uh, user. In FY23, um, the, they would have paid $104.05 uh, using the new rates as well as adjusting the volume, it would go to $112.48 or an increase of uh, $8.43 for sewer and for that, of course, they have a sewer and water bill. Their increase would have been $9.08. Again, everything, they're always, uh, the increase, the large part is driven purely by the uh, impact of the MWA's assessment. Um, I can go through the others, but uh, uh, the other, if I could just, just let me just finish on this. The, the second one, the 1,900 cubic foot, they fit into tier two, so there you, the calculation would go, of course, through tier one and partially into tier two. The third one was a 3,000, and that was somebody that was uh, um, right in the middle of tier three, and the last one, 4,500, is somebody who would have been into tier four. But that's why I picked, I wanted to make sure that we looked at 
cases and uh, uses that were. What I'm trying to say. Yes. Is that this really was meant to be a, a, a visual. Yes, it was. Now, basically, what's going to happen if you are in the lowest tier right. and you're using 12, less, 1,200 or less cubic feet, you, this year you're going to pay $178 for your water and sewer bill. If you're uh, on water and sewer. Right. What I yep. just said. So it's $178 if you are people who are in the lowest uh, uh, group who only use uh, less than 12. If you're up at 19, right um, now you're going to pay for the year uh, 200, and I'm rounding these off, yep. about 200 and um, 288 $98. Yeah, 288.90 cents. Yeah. These are so small, they're very difficult. Right. To, what is it? $288.90 if you're a water and sewer user. And if you were a large family or something else, um, you would pay $485 yeah. a year. No, yeah. this is quarterly. Quarter. This is for water and this, sewer. No, that's quarter, quarterly. Quarter. It's quarterly. 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 And oh, this uh, is, what I had is this quarterly? quarterly. Yeah. So uh, multiply yeah. by I'll pay. show you the. On here. Well, as I verbally would explain it, I would include a chart like this, and if we were on the screen, I could bring it up and you could see where they fit um, in. And the last one is, is typically somebody who's not on sewer, but irrigates their lawn, or it's a commercial operation. I think people want to know what they're going to be paying for their yeah. water and sewer. And this, this was the purpose, and this is what we did last year, the same uh, um, item here. Um, the, uh, so it was, the purpose there was to uh, present it rather than it's a percentage of this or that. We could just have some typical examples um, similar to what we did last year. Okay. So the, the person who uses 1200 or less for water and sewer is going to pay $716 a year. I would have to get my calculator out and multiply it, but so that's yep. what I just did. Yeah, because that's what people are interested in. They right. want to know how much they're going to be paying yearly okay. for this service. I, I focused it on what was your bill look like. Yeah, you know, but um, but anyways, it doesn't help them when they're budgeting because usually yeah. people budget by the month, and it's nice to know what the total price is. Future years, I'll add a column, Pat. For that. Well, the, the other question usually is how much did it go up? And the answer to that is it's a blended between the 8.1% and the 1%. So they're going to be paying four point something more than they did the year before. Well, if you, you can look in the examples. On, total bill. Uh, on the third. If you use the least amount of water, we'll pay the biggest increase. N no. No? No. Tell me why not. They, they, well, if you're, if you're the first thing, you're... Uh, Oh, okay. I, I see what you're looking at the percentage increase. I was looking at the dollar, actual dollar amount, because people no, don't pay percentages, they pay dollars. Yeah. But the percentage increase is what you're going to be paying. Right. If the, the lowest one was. But their rates are lower, and yeah, I would have to go I, through the. I don't the understand why the people who use the least amount of water would have to pay the most percentage. They don't pay the most. The, the percentage, and I'd have to uh, get the calculator out. And I tell you what, for. For future years, okay. if we use this type of chart that. again, I will uh, add some columns that will. Uh... But anyways, the example, the uh, purpose of that was to show some sample ideas so that one would see what does one percent mean, what is five percent. It really turns out to, because of the adjustment of the amount of water we use for the sewer rate that it typically comes to eight percent. And I have a question on the sewer, like um, in the budget uh, discussion on 217. Well, why don't we get to this later? Okay. You're jumping ahead there. No, you. on the percentage only. Yeah, but will the percentages? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're okay. Go so, ahead. Make your point. So, so the proposal was five percent increase, and and I see that somehow now it's it's eight eight. Eight and a half percent increase coming up. It's, the rate is changing five percent, but we're changing the volume of water that we're. Accounting. Yeah, which is eight and a half percent basically. Right. It turns yeah. out to yeah. be total, and that's shown on this chart that we just went through. If you look at the last, the percentage increase, 
for sewer is like 8.1, 8.09, 8.1. I mean, that, that's correct. So what happened between the uh, the budget which was presented in uh, Feb, uh, you know February and now that we need to increase eight percent? Why why oh, is still not the, the five percent with that? To uh, 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 generate the revenue that we need, the, uh, for sewer, we needed to generate revenue of $5.8 million. And we had, uh, last year, increase from 80% of your water going into the sewer rate to 85%. And looking at what other communities were doing, um, the suggestion was go to 87.5%. So we already we already have collected 5.5 million dollar this year YTD until last month. Um, so I don't see we can, we I can would, do YTD yeah. 5.8 million dollar without had, changing any rate. But assuming that MWR is changing the rate by 5 percent next year, we should be ready to just do 5 percent increase. What we already, I YTD what I would revenue. suggest, and if we had this in color. What you would see is that, yes, this current year, we have been consistently um, using more or uh, pumping more water. And, and that's, we show that we're getting more revenue. If you go back um, another year, it was like half and half. Sometimes we were above, sometimes you below. If you went to the previous, we were almost always lower than the historical average. Um, and that's, I think, would be, um, dangerous to say, oh, let's just take the best case and ignore that things fluctuate, that some years the weather, the conditions of the, I think, perhaps what you would mention, that more people were working at home, therefore they were using water. Remember you talked home. about Quincy and Walpole, yeah. how they have less surge than they should really, or they have more. What were you saying about them being outliers? Oh, they, their percentage, they didn't use 100% of the water use in the MWA uh, survey. It could it be that maybe uh, that people are buying their water? I, I don't know. It, it, when you looked at it, there was just so many communities that used it at 100%, and there was two that, were, that came right to mind. One was Quincy. And I think theirs was 85 or 90 percent, if I forget which. And ours was the survey showed it us at 80 percent. They weren't and, up to and date. And Narod used 60 percent for the first block, and then later it goes up. Yeah. So they have block system with 60 percent of the water. So if, All right. if people are, are buying water, yeah, maybe they don't trust our water system, um, which is not the best thing in the world. No. Anyways. Uh, I don't, we don't know. The, the last page was to show the position of where our water returned, uh, retained earnings and sewer retained earnings. I um, put that in because that's something that usually at the rate discussions has occurred. I broke it down that um, at the beginning of FY22, uh, water, our retained earnings was uh, 2.8 million. And then as listed on the uh, um, page there, there's been uh, four items, or three items, that uh, have uh, reduced that, uh, what we started out with. One, uh, we had to use 80,000 on the rates. Um, there were uh, $1.4 million worth of uh, capital items covered at the October town meeting. And then we had uh, a legal settlement of uh, 217. So as of the beginning of the month, our retained earnings uh, for water was just over a million dollar, a million, actually one million eighty one thousand one hundred fifty nine, and that is uh, maybe one hundred and fifty million a thousand below what the best practice of of ha always having twenty percent of revenue. Looking at the sewer, um, we started the fiscal year with retained earnings of one point four million. Um, we did not have to use any uh, of the sewer uh, retained earnings on the FY23 sewer rate, uh, we did have $50,000 worth of capital, and there was also a sewer component to that legal settlement, resulting in that currently, or at least as of the beginning of this month, the retained earnings for sewer was 1,283,983, which is just uh, slightly above the proposed 20% uh, of re um, 
revenues best practice. In the last two pages. Uh, one quick question. So okay. what will happen to the $700,000 extra revenue which we got now, YTD, um, that will add to the? What will happen, related, and Jody, uh, correct add, me on that, that will, our uh, retained earnings will be certified. Usually it's around uh, August, isn't it, Jody? Around so, August. That, would, that money will become available for so around uh, two million dollar. We'll have two million dollars. Yes, okay. and then we'll have the October uh, um, fall town meeting, and we have uh, a number of capital items that will uh, dip into that. And it's the same thing that happens whenever we have capital uh, items. Typically now, at least for the last few uh, town meeting cycles. The, fir the spring was dealing strictly with budgets. The uh, fall is where we would um, do our capital work. And we have you know, a five-year capital plan um, that we'll use. We'll use know, that uh, uh, 700000 We could use that and more, okay. depending on how much uh, is being proposed for uh, capital spending. So that um, is what I would have presented uh, um, to the uh, audience, and now I, our single, our two members of the audience. So uh, um, with that, I mean, I would, uh, I don't know if, Jeff, you've been silent, if you have any comments. No, just the only comment is that 700,000 surplus we're looking at this year, that'll go to the water retained earnings. Yes. Um, with so, uh, yeah, and the sewer is sort of an interesting, uh, if we are able to um, upgrade the utilization of the septage facility, that could help bring yeah. more revenue in uh, over there. Yeah. That's correct. And your 87.5% should boost up the revenues a little bit also. And I think hey, Bill, for, for well, if I recall, I think directionally as a board, we were looking to get to 90% and kind of you know, but we were going to do it incrementally over a number of years. Right. Okay. So um, with that, I, I would propose that as presented, we would increase the water uh, rates by the 1% as presented. Uh, the fire suppression, taking uh, Patrick and John's uh, suggestion that we um, use the, the table, but uh, we would ex uh, uh, deal with just commercial, excluding residents, um, that have less than three or less units. That's correct, John? Right. Yeah. Three or less. Yeah. Three or less. Other than that, the uh, septage, I'm, I'm going to suggest for, for, uh, that on the sewer, a 5% increase. And at this point, I'm going to, because uh, Pradeep, you're the only one who's spoken, we can uh, address and see if there are others, that we go from eight cents down to six cents. And that would be the changes that I would make a motion that we adopt for our, our um, rates for FY24. We no. increased the hours on this facility. Twice. Has that shown any beneficial effect, Scott? Not really, not significantly. I can't hear you. Excuse the mic, would you please? Not significantly. Okay, so no one's taken advantage of the extra? It's still been a little bit variable. But um, there's nothing that has really changed as far as you're talking about manning it full time or you're talking about just the hour extension. Okay, my thought on this is if we should try something then, and if we lower it down to six, we can always raise it. We don't have yeah. to wait yeah. forever to. It's not, we're not committed to that forever. So if we drop it to six and we don't see anything, then, then we'll bring it back up. We would hold a rate hearing mid-year and, and bring it back to uh, right. seven or eight, whatever we think is appropriate. Yes. And, and if these people start using the facility at six, we'll make money, they'll make money, and right. they'll be really happy. Right. Okay. Hey, Scott, could you, um, could you just talk to you know, the fact that we had a number of haulers, local haulers, that weren't using the facility? We We've spoken with them, you know, kind of addressed some of their concerns. Um, and, you know, we've got a handful of haulers that haven't been using the facility that are looking into it and going through the process to get certified. That's correct. We have at least two of them that are trying to go through the process of getting um, a, a permit through us to, to use the facility and do all the requirements necessary to use it. 
So there is some interest there for people that are not using it now. What do you mean trying to get a permit? I'm not trying to get a permit. They're actually going through the process. They are, they have to get a permit from the town. Yeah, well, I know they should be. Yeah, it's not Maybe a. We should give them away as door prizes. Well, they also have to get a permit from the MWRA. Well, I know. So that, and the, the, the nuttiness of that is that the people from Walpole. The, no, let's put it the other way. We can only take waste from from the MWR area in our septage facility. Yet the haulers, even though they get a license, they, they all get a license from the MWRA? The ones that use our facility, yes. Or the ones that don't, they're like wildcats. They can go anywhere. Correct. And so none of these other locations they go to have any restrictions like, like we have on our septage facility. In terms that, of what? That their mother, for the waste disposal, mm -hmm requires them to come from their jurisdiction or from their domain I, of business. I don't believe they have those restrictions. Yeah, I, I not that we discuss it here, but I, I really believe, Scott, that if we get a marketing program devised, we can get the people that are qualified to, from MWA Waste, to come here if we make it attractive to them. One of the ways, in my opinion, to make it attractive is if you do lower the rate, all these haulers have a cost associated with the father. They drive that waste away. It's a, mm. That's a cost burden they have to bear. So they might have more incentive to not have a mixed load where it's partly MWRA and partly not, and they have to go somewhere else. And there's also the potential that they might pass on any savings um, to the customer and may be more competitive. So there might be some incentive in those areas. So, okay. Chairman Hassenjager? Yes. Um, Mr. Abbott, he did propose a motion. I'd like yes. to second that. I was just going to bring that up. But I'd yeah, like to second it. Has anyone seconded it? Yeah, I don't think so. What's that? I'm seconding it now. No, can we, can we break down by a different uh, thing, like water separately, sewer separately, septic separately? I'd like to just, let's take what we've presented, and then if, if that fails, then, and you think, oh, if you, I, you may be saying, no, I'm, I, I don't like the, the entire package. If we change this, that your vote that's would change. Said, that's what I said, yeah. So that's why I'm saying we got a motion rather than to seeing if what's been proposed gets three votes. If it does, then we're all set. If it doesn't, then we'll, uh, you know, we could get back to making uh, some changes if uh, that might gain a extra vote. Yeah, no, I disagree with that. I think we'll, we'll just... Uh, We'll entertain a motion on the one item that uh, there's some disagreement about. Okay. And then we'll deal with the whole package. All right. So we'll uh, hold on, just hold take on. a there's vote a, there's whether a you want to go with the table. eight or the six. I think that's what the. You no, know, I think we should. Uh, what I requested is that we should um, talk about the motion should be for water separates, sewer separate, hey. so that we, we vote uh, differently. John, if I may. John. Sure. There's, there's a motion. We need to take a vote on it. The motion that's on the floor right now. That's what we need to take a vote on. All right, you second it. All right, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Abbott, aye. We do have to take a roll. Fisher? Aye. Castanello? Abstain. Hassan Yeager? No. No. All right, okay. so now let's look at individual things. If Pradeep, you wish to make a, is the water okay? So what's the motion for the water? The water motion would be 1% uh, across the board all uh, for all the rates as was presented. Oh. And the uh, I, I would also include the fire suppression, uh, commercial only uh, ex excluding residential that had three or less uh, units. Uh, Mr. Chairman? I'll move that. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Fasanello. Hold on. Can you, repeat, can you repeat the motion? The motion would be that we would use the, uh, for water, 1% as uh, was presented in our package. And the thing that we changed was the fire suppression. Um, it would only apply, the table would stay the same as presented, but it would only apply to commercial um, 
ex um, excluding residential units that were three or less. Right. So if you had four units, you're in the using. Well, if you had three units in a commercial. In a commercial, yes, they would be uh, included. Well, your, your, your entitlement of that should, could possibly be, uh, and I think that's what was suggested, is it's a commercial suppression system with the residential exemption of residential units not uh, only after three units. All right. And so it, I think it's important to have it on the, well, I think as when it's we, printed, we, I, it's important to have it printed what it is. We'll make sure that when Barbara updates the uh, rates that we do it, specify that it's commercial, but it includes um, residential. residential, oh, three units or more. That Over are, three units. Yeah. Okay. And, and, so I, and Bill, those, those rates were calculated based on the small, medium, large, and that large being a thousand and not a hundred. Yes, a thousand. Okay. That's correct. Not a thousand. Uh, is the typo. So okay, the rates are small is a hundred dollars, medium five hundred, large one thousand. Okay. Any other discussion? Where do, where do we stop on the vote? <laughs> let's let's start start over again. Patrick. Start over. Fastenolo, aye. Okay, Mishra. Yes. Abbott. Abbott. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Okay, Hassan Yeager. Yes. So five zero zero. So you got that part done. All right. On the uh, sewer, um, or maybe we could take it as two separate things: the septage uh, rate versus the plain sewer rate. So I would make a motion and on the sewer rate that the increase would be 5% and the uh, rate would be applied against 87.5% of the um, water use, uh, excluding the issue with uh, the, if you have a second meter where we already go to 100%. Okay. Uh, just just as a discussion point, uh, uh, the 87.5 change is is not a great idea. We uh, last year we already reduced it from the 20% um, discount to the residential customer to 15%, which was 85%. And this year again we are reducing it. So that's that's impact on the residential customer. Um, we should avoid that for at least for. You know, increasing the CO cost. <clears throat> to cover our, um, the um, so, uh, sewer expenses. We, we do charge 100% to the uh, commercial. So th what you're proposing no, 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 is. No, we don't do 100% for commercial. Yes, yeah. No. It is, it is in your book. It, it is in the fees. Yeah. It is always for the commercial. It's always 100%. I believe there are two accounts to pay 100%, Siemens and Hollingsworth and Bose. Right. Those are the only ones. Yeah, so it's always 100% for the commercial. No, we're going to look at the uh, the fee schedule, which you're looking at now later. That would be the, the, after we settled on the rates. So industrial use pay 100% and non-industrial use pay 85%. Right. That would be a change we would make that... The, the industrial, they actually measure the volumes. We don't have sewer meters on, res on houses, and that's why we have chosen a percentage, and we originally, I guess, long, long time ago decided that, well, the average person used 20% of their water outside the house that never went into sewer. You just have to look around most neighborhoods, and you know that isn't true. And you can see why uh, folks have... Uh, other communities are increasing or have got to 100%. We're taking that as a step. Did we have a, a second on the 5% increase as, and the uh, changing the uh, 85 percentage to 87.5? Uh, just as a continue the discussion. discussion point, um, the, this is Jody's, one of her favorites here. Um, you're using the collection rate to discount the revenues. You're using 93.9%, which means that uh, the 
payers aren't getting credit for 6.1% that they pay when we set the rate. And you do collect the money with 14% interest, in fact. So that gives us a, an enhancement of uh, $350,000, basically. So there is something um, in your revenue that says uh, liens for principal, principal and interest on liens? Uh, uh, Jody, can, why don't you use a microphone so you, people at home can see you? If you go you. back to the uh, sewer expense revenue sheet, if you look down on revenues, the uh, third, third item lien, lien, or in, uh, liens, principal in interest 121,180, and penalties and in interest 24,000. That's what Jody's saying. Yes, that the stuff that isn't collected eventually does come in, and it is accounted for, John. Right. It's just uh, doing in this rate that you you have the illusion with the rate being. Uh, higher number um, one one more uh, comment um, in the fees schedule I think we are calling it industrial use hundred percent meter volume um, uh, I suggest that we change that to use the commercial and industrial user and keep the residential use at 85 percent of the meter volume so that will not impact the residential customer but mostly the commercial and industrial user. Okay, any discussion on that? No, I... Patrick. Chair, Chairman. Jeff, go ahead. So Bill's got a motion on the table. Do, do we want to look for a second on that or do we want to look to reconsider with Pradeep's proposal? You want to discuss my proposal before? Well, no, Bill's got a motion on the table. So I have a second and we take a vote on it and then we discuss yours if it fails. It's up to however chairman was we don't have a second on it yet, so chairman right, we don't have a second yet, so we're discussing. Thank you. So so the the comment is that uh, we charge hundred percent to industrial user and a non industrial user are eighty five percent. Uh, we should change that to use um, commercial and industrial user 100% and keep the residential user at 85% of the volume. So that impact is less on the residential user. Well, that's interesting. And, and is that a motion, Pradeep? Well, we ask for discussion and then I'll, I'll put a motion. Can I make a comment? I, th yes. I think a 15% increase even for a business is, is a lot to stomach right now as well. Yeah, so so the the increase I mean, suggested by pretty pretty I'm 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 in agreement that directionally we should do that maybe for commercial properties, but I don't think it's something we do in just one year. If we're going to go from eighty five to one hundred, we as a board look to do it incrementally over a couple of years. And and I could support that, but I couldn't support going from eighty five to one hundred. No, which is fine, which is totally fine. But uh, the first thing we have to do is that uh, make sure that the residential user, they use most safely water, like, you know, shower, this and that. But commercial users, they, they can be using for anything. And their, their use is always 100%. We can't estimate that, okay, they're using it for lawn, and they're not using it for, their water goes to, 100% water goes to flush. Um, so that's that's one technicality of the whole statement. Uh, commercial. Kenya, the only thing I would be cautious on is that there are far more residential users than there are commercial users, and it's one of those cases you you change um, uh, even something that seems relatively small on the residential. It can have a dramatic amount on your rev revenue. And when you look at the commercial, it works, of course, the opposite your way. So I, I really think that there's a potential that we won't meet the revenue uh, requirements if we uh, leave the resident at 85%. That's a separate. Like, I think we should be uh, increasing that rates based on the MWRA uh, projection. That has nothing to do how much 
uh, industrial use and commercial use and the residential use should be charged from the meter point of view. That's totally separate. We are not. I don't understand why you say that's separate. Because the five percent and eight percent is impacting everyone. Yes. And then, and this change is basically that discussion hasn't come up, isn't it? That but, how much we should change. But what that. you're suggesting is that the five percent. It's it, there's two factors: five percent and increasing the percentage of water that we use from 85 to uh, 87 and a half. In other words, another two and a half percent of their water use. Um, if you don't, that two and a half percent, um, if it's not there, I think uh, that we'd have trouble um, meeting the total of $5.8 million worth of uh, revenue on the sewer. Uh, that's, I, I, that may, I, I disagree with that because uh, when... Well, uh, give me the, the exact budget, number of what it budget, is. When the budget was given to us on 217, it was proposed 5% increase and that all the numbers are meeting 5.8 million some uh, meeting with the 5% increase. Right. When you change here just the percentage of commercial and residential, you'll get extra revenue from the commercial users. So that itself it will bring you extra revenues. But, and then but you want to get extra from the commercial and more uh, less from the more from the commercial and less from the residential if I understand. I mean, that's what you're suggesting. The point I'm making is there's a whole lot more residential accounts than there are commercial. And so if you, if they were 50-50, I'd say, all right, yeah, you're squeezing it here and reducing, you know, increasing it here and reducing it there. It, it's a wash. The problem is I, I don't the residential is a huge amount. The commercial uh, number I, of accounts is, is much smaller. I, I don't think there's a wash. I, I already see YTDA revenues are $5.5 .5 million. Without changing rate also, we can meet this uh, budget goal. Well, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to uh, be more proactive about MWLA rate increase, and that 5% will cover the charge. We still have one month of revenue missing from here. We already have $5.5 .5 million of revenue from the users. So it's like it's like 120 going from 85% uh, to 87.5 is like 120 some thousand dollars, 125 thousand dollars. That's the difference. That's the in, that's the increase on the residential side. So if you if you're ratcheting that's up, the, that's the increase across the board because that's proposed for everything. That's commercial and residential. Well, what he's saying is, if you look at the uh, commercial, if you're going up, uh, what, to 90%? Oh, I think, okay. I know it's not. Well, no. What were you thinking as a percentage there? 100% and 90%? 200%. No, no. The sewer rate. What's going on up there? Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, he's trying to find a solution. Uh, this, if this this uh, two and a half percent uh, change, it should have been t told us in the budget meeting. Why this comes up in the rate hearing, like all of a sudden that changing the slab? I I don't uh, agree. I'll put it on that note too. If you look at the sewer rates, okay, out of town sewer rate yeah. on on page ten, you will see that. Um, out of town is the same percent increase as the in town users. Okay, you yeah. see that there? It's it's one two third line down, and it's um, sewer out of town. Uh, it's uh, the sewer rate is one forty nine forty six. Okay, and that's a five percent increase. Yeah, just just five yeah. Yeah, I don't understand why it shouldn't be more than 5% increase. It probably should be at least six. It shouldn't be the same as the people who pay for all the infrastructure all these years. Yeah. I think that um, that increase should be um, higher. So I, I just spent some time talking to Jody. Um, and she, and I, I she convinced me and Jim is that maybe we could go on commercial um, at 100% and leave the residential at 85%. Bill, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to support 
I won't go 100% on commercial all at once. You want to take an approach to phasing in over a couple of years? I'm fine with that. How about uh, 90%? I was just going my to proposal? suggest 90% for commercial. Bill, Bill my proposal is 90% commercial, 87 and a half residential. Let's keep it capped to residential uh, for the next couple of years and work to get to 100% on commercial. Yeah. To that, to that, I would say that, you know, having empathy for the business is good, Jeff, but uh, I think the, uh, particularly in the low end of the water user, uh, having over an 8% increase uh, hitting them in one year is uh, probably worse than having, uh, having the business just being hit with that. I mean, basically. 90% well, commercial, 87%. Uh, residential except for pier one tier one should be 80 now, now let me tell you, explain well, why no well uh, but there's one thing is that and I and Pradeep has mentioned about using tiered I would not want to do that now just based on how long it took me to develop water and it won't take as long because I now have a lot more data um, if we if we want to go a tiered sewer rate, and, and a lot of places do. No, I'm not doing tier. I'm, I'm not talking. Well, no, but once you say tier one, you now have a tier. You're now oh, dealing tiers. No, you didn't hear what I said. I'm talking about water rates. I'm what? Oh, water rates. Water rates. We've On already, tier one, yeah. the water rate should be 80%. Um, because these, there's, not, there's very few people on tier one. No, no. How no, many no, people are there? Forty percent of the water users are in tier one. About twenty-six percent are in, just in tier two. No. Okay. Yeah. No. You. So Bill. these are the people who use the least amount of water. They're, they're the people who have. They're the older people who have um, two people living in the house, maybe only one, God forbid, and um, they're the ones that we should be giving the break to. So how do you wish to do this in sewer? I just. Oh, no. On sewer. That's a whole different We've already yeah, addressed we're, on, we're, on we're, we're on sewer. We're having your conference over in the corner. I was talking about this. We've taken that care the, of water already. The sewer rate for out of town is the same increase as the in town users. And, and the sewer rate for out of town people should be higher. Their rate increase should be higher than the people in the town who've paid for the sewer infrastructure for all these this hundred years. Okay. The, the okay, you see on page. No, I understand 10, what you're saying. Now I do. Line three. Yeah. Over a column one, two, three, three. You see it says 5% sewer out of town. So yeah. there's two things I'm talking about here. Okay. One is that the lower tier one water users should be at 80% like it always was because of the reasons I just enumerated. And secondly, the rate for out-of-town sewer users should be more than what the in-town okay. residents are paying. So that's... Uh, All right, so on sewer, if I understand... Uh, All right. I just have a comment um, on what Pat just said. So the uh, if we're talking I sewer... Have, the, yeah. If we're talking sewer out of, out of town, that's only 2% of, less than. It's nine people. Well, only nine yeah. people. It's not 2%. It's I'm um, talking less about than. fairness. I know it won't amount to much. Right. It probably amount to a few it's hundred like $1, dollars. $1,400, I it, think. But it seems gross. to me, you know, we didn't have to put them on sewer. We did it to the kindness of our heart. And they're paying the same rate increase as our in-town users, who for 100 years have supported the infrastructure that everybody is now enjoying. Right, understood. That is but unfair. I'm just saying the if rate, you're looking the rate for... Rate. It's a huge difference in the rate. Right, it's, it's immaterial. Yeah. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the increase. I'll, I'll make a proposal, Jody. How's this? We, we keep the, the residential sewer at 85%. We go to 90% on the business in the out-of-town and we hope that the missing 40,000 or 50,000 comes from increase in the septage. The uh, other thing I would just add is if the, in the case of H&V, they uh, pay 100% because they're using yeah. basically river water. They, but other commercial 
um, would, you're saying 90%. So it would exclude H and V because they're already at 100% and they're not using our, our oh, drinking yeah. water basically in the sewer. It's river water. So what would be the criteria for the large sewer commercial users? What would be the... Well, basically, just yeah, you're okay. saying all commercial would be all at 90 percent. commercial 90 percent. Yeah, but what I'm saying, how would you differentiate that if you made it two, two steps? In what? Commercial high, heavy user and, and moderate user. If you, it's, no. it's, there's so three commercial the, rates. There's 200. Uh, the type code is for residential is 200. Commercial is 210. 220 is... Uh, H and V. They're the only ones because well, the only one. they're the only Bill, ones. I thought, Bill, I thought you said Siemens was also. I, I don't think that's correct. I think they're listed as a 210 type code. 210 commercial. Okay. Yeah. And H and V has so, a sewer meter. Yes, because Chairman they're... Has, Chairman has me. Yeah. Can I ask? So am I understanding that keeping residential at 85, raising all commercial to 90, Except other than those that are already deemed 100%, that's going to be about a difference of shortfall of forty thousand dollars that we anticipated from the budget. Yeah. Okay, I can and, support that. Okay. I think right. that we can monitor we'll leave those two companies though at one hundred percent, whatever they were. All right. I just right. have one. I have one question of the board. Designation in terms of Liberty Village Union uh, Blackburn Union privileges, West. the apartment complexes. What what classification are they? I believe they are uh, two, they would be considered, actually I think you'd have to go and look, that's one of the things we'd have to start to look at all of the um, larger properties. They, they should be classified as commercial, they're right. for profit. And I think it, since the rates didn't make any difference historically, sometimes they were, sometimes they weren't, we'd have to go through and, and correct anybody who so, is a commercial operator. So the three operation. big ones, Gatehouse, E Street. And West Street should yeah. all be 90%. And Summer Street. Absolutely. Those, those Summer Street, once it comes on. Correct our definitions because yeah. that's not, uh, those, are, those are clearly businesses. They're not. I don't think we ha ever had a residents. second on my motion, so I'll withdraw it. And your motion, John, would be 5%, um, 85, but using 85% of the water for residential and commercial. It would again the rate would be five percent, but we would be going against ninety percent of their water, and that would exclude the H and V, who is at a hundred percent anyways. Or any any other heavy uh, user alloc. Yeah, that becomes that in that if they make use of the two twenty. Uh, that's code. defined. I don't know yeah. how you, I, at the top right now. I don't know how you define that, but it would be if you meter if you have a sewer meter. That's how we. Sewer meter is all, should be always hundred yeah. percent. That so if be. that's your motion, John, I will second it. Can I ask a question? Um, does that include the six cents septage? Or no? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So your motion includes the six cents. Uh, six so are cents? are we yeah, coming down from the eight cent to six cents? To six. Eight, yeah. From eight cents to six cents. Okay. Okay. I've seconded your motion. That's for marketing purposes, but if we're going to raise more money, okay, right. So I'm going to do that. Abbott, yes. Passanello, yes. Fisher, yes. Fisher, yes. Passanello, okay. yes. Five zero zero. Okay. Thank you. Thank that you. takes care of water and sewer. The last item that we would do is looking at the our fee schedule, and other than. Um, I, I would, for water charges, it lists that it's a 90-day billing period, and um, Pradeep, you've noticed that on some occasions it's been 91 or 81. I would change 92. that to quarterly. To the quarter, or you can even call it a 30 days uh, cycle, because... Uh, we, we, we definitely, we're not... No, no, 30, the, the rate you can say uh, that uh, it, it, you can change the block to daily or 30 days or 90 days. That does not matter mathematically on any formula, any table. Uh, the the thing is, when they're using it for 93 days or you know 92 days or 94 days, it's easier. You, no one has to, you know. The the rating system in in Munis doesn't know. Whether it's always it's always daily. It's it, average. No, daily. it it just says tell me the usage, 
and and I, I use the table. Uh, the, it doesn't not know it by day. That, so, that's correct. Right. So, so that's why they're using. Uh, so my suggestion is to use the 30-day billing, a 30-day uh, block, but t quarterly billing. Uh, no. It, it's the same rate. It. I, I'm, I'm very familiar with how the Munis system works. It does not know whether you're billing daily, monthly, quarterly. It says, give me the usage, and I go this table. Yeah, the, the, and it doesn't know whether you use that w water in, in a month, you, you a can day. Feed, yeah, that's, and uh, that's the same thing I'm saying, that you can feed that a 30-day table, you can feed a daily table, you can feed a 90-day table, you can feed a 120 days table, Muni system will calculate your uses. No, it's, it, it does not know how. Because they, there's one only, the rates are same. The rates are same. Let's, let's agree to disagree on that. Well, what the, I would have brought up. Isn't that a computer expert's job, though, to tell the computer what to do? I mean, the computer doesn't tell you you can't do this. You can, you can talk to the people who set up the rate table. I know what it looks like. It doesn't know that we're doing quarterly or whatever. The Why key is. It, no, that's the question. Because the, the, so you, the key is. How often do you read the, is that usage? And if you want to uh, change the do quarterly, you're going to you the usage would you could not use the rate table that we have that we've already voted. Our leaders record. We can set it to record every two minutes if we want. Yes. So but what this, are you talking about? When it goes to to Munis, it says what is the usage, and it then goes it says is it z between no, zero and fifteen hundred? Doesn't want to know what time frame that usage is in? No. What kind of program is that? Well, just telling you what it, how it works. Anyways, can, so they, can what, they adjust that? Can they fix you, that? Well, that's the problem if you change, because in one case you said, well, just put in monthly rates. You'd lose, th you'd lose two thirds of your revenue because we, the usage that comes in is a, a quarterly usage, not a monthly usage. I, I will, All right. let's just go on to that. I would ask Scott, on these charges, where it's seventy-five dollars for the uh, final reading, a uh, hundred dollars if less than twenty-four. All that list there. Do we see? Do you see a need to change any of those flat fees that we have listed? No. No. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Fessler. You know, I, I've had a lot of work done recently, and every time I call anybody to do anything, a plumber or uh, anybody. It, it's, it's, it used to be 100 bucks that show up. And that was like 150, $175. dollars. Um, I have to think that the town's expenses have to mirror that. And I'd ask the director if that's true or not. Is it? Have yeah. our expenses, the gasoline some... increase going up, and the, et cetera, et cetera? Those are accounted for in the Connection fees, the gasoline, and things like that. Um, that is currently under review based on the information that the consultant has provided us with. Uh, he's of the opinion that the fees are where they should be right now. Really? Now, this year there's been maybe some incremental costs in some labor, like with the final reads, but negligible in my opinion. Because these look you know, low to me from what I've been experiencing. It, maybe the city can do it for less money then, right? Yeah, actually, the, uh, actually the, the pricing that's in there, like the final read, for example, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we've changed the process on that yeah, to and now, basically be remote, so it's... On the inflow and infiltration. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, you know we've had all kinds of things going on with that. Right now, currently, if somebody comes in and wants to join our sewer system, are they responsible for I and I? No. So, a company can come into our town, hitch up to the sewer, discharge their storage, and they only pay for what they've discharged. They're not paying for. They pay, infrastructure fee they pay what they discharge and, the and they capacity that they can up they're taking up they'll pay a connection fee okay now when i was thinking about this either we raise the connection fee for new and it has to account for 
the infrastructure costs and the capacity usage that, that they're taking up, or we start to charge them for how much they're putting in. I would suggest that any inflow and infiltration contribution be included in the connection fee, as you just stated. Uh, we, All right. We had the talked about that before. We were, we were never sued about the connection fee. Is that correct? We have been. So far. <laughs> if we have been. We have been. <laughs> did, we, did we prevail? My, my suggestion was did that not. We, we, uh, might, <laughs> we might want to look at to see if they're it's been a while. Maybe look at the equivalent right, of Wood, that's what I just Woodcock said. and Associates or whoever. That's exactly what I yeah. just said. It's, it, the study is just about 90% complete. Was the connection fee held to be arbitrary and capricious? Uh, or could we justify it? It, was, it wasn't so much in the calculation of the connection fee. The INI fee was, was problematic. Well, I knew that. Yeah. So here's what I propose. If we're going to have trouble with the INI legally, why not increase the connection fee so these people who are joining our sewer system pay their fair share? We will reach out to the consultant and have them look at that and see how to best incorporate that. And we need to make sure that it's a true figure. In other words, they're taking up our capacity, right? Now, you know, we're, we're the only town on the MWRA system did not have um, CSOs. Mm -hmm. Okay, the only municipality where during that big storm we had a few years ago, every other city had their um, storm water mixing with the storage and it was a horror show. But not Walpole, because we had been very fastidious in doing I and I. I'd hate to see that ruined now because um, I guess the courts have interfered. Uh, and I think we still need to have a good sewer system. We have actually an, an, a very good sewer system. We should keep that, but we'll need money to do it. And I think we need to find a way to make that happen. Well, one, is, as you've noted, could be somehow incorporated into the entrance fee. But the other thing is we participate in the uh, MWRA's phase 11, 12, 13, whatever, for, uh, and that's where we get money for uh, doing our INI uh, searches and uh, making the repairs. Every other town did too. Yeah, I know. Well, that, if the concern is about money, we have a source of money. Right now we do. Right. That's going to dry up very shortly. Well, and then that's why you, you look at the uh, um, entrance fee as to incorporate it there. We but will have we, the, the company that's performing the study for us is Raftelis. Okay, can they give us some logical, coherent numbers so I'm that we can... I'm sure that they can. We can not be accused of being... <clears throat> arbitrary and capricious. All right. Thank you. Well, based on, it's, since it's, we have yeah, somebody they, that's going there, other than just um, putting in the new rate tables, I would say leave for now all the rest of the fees. I wasn't assuming that we could do that tonight. Okay, so then we... Uh, just, uh, just, it was just something that yeah. I thought needs to be addressed. Okay. Yeah, Rick, I think that the non-residential, probably those numbers could probably be ratcheted up because they're, you know, the same or less than residential, which doesn't make any sense. Non-residential. The, the non-residential charges. Oh, okay. The entrance fees. All right. Typically, we adjust them by a percentage, Mr. Chairman, when we adjust uh, the the in town the the in town uh, connection fee when that's adjusted we typically take a percentage and tack it on we haven't adjusted those connection fees in several years which is why we hired Raf tell us to look at them and once his report comes through we'll uh, maybe hold another rate hearing if necessary okay I think we've addressed so, everything that we're yeah, going to address. I'd like okay. to make a motion that we close the hearing. All right, is there a okay. second? Um, yeah, uh, I, I have, I, I had to comment about that, uh, uh, the f payment fees, the 40 cents mm -hmm. fee That's for the, um, for the payers. So yeah. we, we have tried to have the, the workshop. But he's, he's got a, yeah. 
it's charge. So we, we did, did try to have the workshop uh, because of the last time we yeah. wanted to have the discussion um, about the 40 cent charges, uh, we were told that there'll be a workshop in, before the rate hearing and still we didn't get the workshop done. And the uh, workshop would be with Jody and Jody, if we can provide a time that we can discuss that and we can explain, it's not a rate, so it has nothing to do with our rates. Right. It well, is, explain that, please. It's yeah. a charge. Oh, it's a charge. It, it applies to Consumer what uh, my uh, property tax bill. If I do it, I would be paid, have to pay, charge that 40 cents. So in terms of the real estate tax, is that something we would have to discuss? Yeah. Because, um, you know, if you're decreasing the water and sewer, um, water and sewer will need to absorb that cost. So, Which is, yeah. You know, so the rate payer gets the, you know, doesn't pay the 40 cents, but water and sewer will have to budget for that expense. That's correct. So uh, what uh, what I calculated is, uh, I think I got this 1,200 customer who are paying by bank accounts. And um, for four years, uh, sorry, so four bills in a year, that cost is coming to $1,920, like less than $2,000. I think the board can, uh, if board agrees, I think we can take that cost and provide this service to the end user so that they make a payment through the hey, bank Pradeep, account. And, and Pradeep, can I make a comment? So the, the, the website, the online bill pay website today takes motor vehicle excise tax, it takes water and sewer bills. Um, I think there's another bill it takes as well. Um, how, how do we justify waiving the fee for water and sewer but not the other bills? Because those those are fixed cost, property taxes, fixed, fixed cost, your um, motor excise is also fixed cost, paid once in a year. Um, they 40 can, cents have, is less have, than the cost of a stamp. They have enough, they have enough, that's fine, but, but the problem here is um, we are generating a lot of paper bills, sending the users and, and um, basically asking them to f pay 40 cents extra to make the electronic payment when other water utilities has gone, have removed these charges. There Good. are additional costs, I think indirect cost and printing and processing the check cost, which is already paid in, is in our budget. So overall the 40 cents will reduce the overall, all the indirect printing, posting other costs to us. So that no, uh, $2,000. I, I, I don't agree, no. That's, I think, Those uh, indirect there costs is, are our indirect costs. That 40 cents has nothing to do with it, and it's not part of it. That's something paid by the consumer. You, you said, it's, you Mr. said, Chairman, the, the, do we close the rate here? This is not a, a rate issue. That's, it's a collection, and it's an issue that um, the finance department, and, and we can have that discussion, but it's not. No, I, I disagree. I, I think yeah, I've been, I've been told two times in the last, also. last two meetings, I've been told that it, it can be discussed in the rate hearing. And I've been told that I can't be discussed. That's that's. I'm, totally I'm telling you my no. position. That's fine. You 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 said told that it should be discussed in the rate hearing. Yeah, so, I, Bill, you made a motion to close the rate hearing. I'll second that. Okay, moves and seconded. Uh, any, Is there a motion here that we need to address? Well, we're going to see if there's any vote on that. If we want to close the hearing, moves and seconded to close the hearing. Any discussion? No. Mr. Fasanello. Abstain. Have it, yes, close. Uh, Mr. Mishra. No. Hassan Yeager, no. Yes. Mr. Fisher, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, it's two to two. So basically, this is it's really a mundane thing, but it's important to Pradeep. And I think, I think what he's talking about, it's this pathway to um, customer care. This is kind of his... Your, your deal. That's correct. Yeah. And it's a small step. I, th I, I would look at it like almost Bill, like a like a test market. He's saying, let's see if you take that forty cents away, just do it for the, the, this next period, one year. How many additional people will we get to pay automatically, to pay electronically, uh, and theoretically that would save. It should save time at the collection office. It should save staff time. It should save some. Uh, there, it still needs to be downloaded and processed in the MUNIS system. So, 
you know, I, I would have to have Lisa here to be able to comment more on that. So well, I yeah, don't know uh, how much savings, I get it. if any. Somehow we're, we're going to be having a workshop on a lot of this other stuff, but I, this here is like just a test to see how many people are out there that really want to go this direction, that they want to go more AI or more tech, technological with the monthly billing and having computer access and all this stuff. That it's not my generation, but it's the other people mm -hmm. who Understood. keep saying, talking about this. So I think, I mean, I don't see any harm in trying this out. It's, it's like he says, it's eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars. It's for, it's forty cents. It's it's a test to see what John, happens with these twelve hundred 12, uh, people. If they increase, does it turn out to be three thousand, or does it wither, or is it make any difference? So that yes. will increase the expense. If if you get more people doing it that way, that's going to increase the budgeted expense because we have to cover that fee. So we'll actually get an invoice from um, whoever it invoice comes from. Invoice clerk. And. And so what in effect happens is everybody who's paying water and sewer rates gets charged for whatever that savings to the customer is. So keep that in mind as Can well. Can I just ask, does anybody in this room seriously think somebody's not paying their bill online because of 40 cents? Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. Yep. No. Yep. Not, not or, not or does not charge. How the office gotten about this? Yeah. Well, the, the office, the, they, the user don't want your charges also. How many calls did you so get? So they'll pay 61 cents for a stamp, 350 for a gallon of gas to drive down here, but they won't pay 40 cents. I, I just don't believe it. And that's, 40 that's extra up to cents. You. Yeah. Do you mind the pennies? Do you wind up with it's, saving It's a $12 dollars. million dollar revenue to the town. And, and um, this is great. I, this, I think I don't believe it. So, yeah. pretty, pretty, well, can I make a comment? Test. I would say in, in the can scope I make a of comment? things, this is correct. You know, Commissioner, don't we know? Chairman, Chairman, Chairman Hassan, can, can I make a comment? Can I make a comment? Pradeep, I, I really appreciate the fact that you want to increase customer care. You want to increase online payment. I, I get that. And I'm all about that as well. As much as we can get out of, you know, doing in the office, you know, manually, I, I completely appreciate that. My, my point is 40 cents is not going to move the needle. We need to look at this holistically and come up with other ideas, whether it's another vendor, whether it's some other billing method. Um, I, I just, 40 cents is not going to do it. I, I appreciate where you're going with it, and I want to support that. But I, I just don't think this fee is what's going to do that. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a few more comments. So first is, like, uh, town of Naro does not charge um, extra money, this 40 cents, for people who are paying by uh, water bill by bank account. Second thing is uh, the uh, the system, the technology has advanced. People are paying by QR code and other way, the water bills. And many utilities have started realizing that the e-checking is the most efficient way of uh, processing the payments. Um, I'll give an example of Verizon. It gives you $5 discount on a monthly bill if, if you're paying by uh, bank accounts. So the, the utility industry is waving off the checking accounts uh, payments because they realize that it, it is a s benefits to their whole system. Um, so that's that's my comment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I kind of, I, I, Jeff, for what it's worth, I appreciate your comments to Pradeep. I think that uh, it's a small test. It's coffee money. It's something that he's passionate about of developing further into this whole domain of the market of how people want to be cared for, customers, how they how they want to pay, et cetera. So I, I would support his uh, proposal on a trial this, this year uh, to be part of our, uh, our uh, rate. Our, uh, improvement, rate customer service improvement. Program to be implemented with with approval of this. So does this fall under, you know, the the rate hearing, you know, boundaries? I mean, is this something we make a motion on? I didn't see this on the agenda. So, Mr. Chairman, could I just speak up? I'll try to be pretty quiet for this thing. We we offered to have a, a work session for deeps. For some reason, people's schedules didn't work out. This is outside the rate. This this could impact the tax bills negatively. We don't know the answer to your question well, right we, now. We, we, we don't not, even know if you, you no, no, have which the is authority fine. to do what you're doing. So I'm asking, do you, could we go to town council 
check with them. Is it does it? Think, I believe the authority Which is might totally fall fine. under the treasurer. Collection. Totally fine. I I agree with it. I totally agree with it. Uh, I, I'm not saying that uh, you know you should give discount to the you know other method of payment. What we are talking is just the water and sewer f payments, which are twelve million dollar revenue to the town. We should improve the customer service there. We should you should follow the utilities which others utilities are doing, what town of Narun is doing. So the motion is not that, okay, go and start doing tomorrow. The motion is basically to remove that fees when and if possible. That's that's kind of statement I want to make. Well, I think, Jim, you're, that's not a, it deals with the rates per se. It's really something in the collector's office. Right. And, and, yeah. Right. From what I so, recall, yeah. the former... The yeah, so we can do that. We don't have to... Um, decide tonight, make the decision without having the, um, the information you're saying from council, can we legally do that? And if, is there, you go back and Lisa says, you can't do this, it's about the whatever that, exactly. and, and you know, let's find out those and we can schedule, can we get a, a uh, meeting, you know, like, well, I won't say two weeks from now, but maybe at the beginning in, in so, July so if to... Uh, if you move to direct us to get a, one illegal opinion on this, explore the Mass General Law, and also explore if it's going to impact any of... Jody's most concerned about how would it impact the residential bills. We don't know the answer for you. So I'm asking for you to vote to give direct my office to uh, work with town council to see the legality of it, if it's from with your purview, and to check and see if it impacts any other areas of the town. I'll make that as a motion. That, that's well, let's have a discussion first. I think I disagree with Jim about, uh, you know, legal opinion. Legal opinion is going to cost more than the test. That's right. That's nonsense. We don't, we don't need any legal opinions. opinion. Before we make the rules. We're we can make a decision. By, we're governed by the law, yeah. so we have to follow that. And it's covered under the retainer, so it won't cost you anything. There you go. Oh. It's, it's, it's $1,920. We're already paying. It's already maybe part of our budget paying to the invoice cloud um, so that's that's a very small amount we are trying yeah, you, to we've got 350,000 floating around in there positive money you're getting so 1900 isn't going to break anybody's bank here but the only so thing is wants, if it's wants, illegal to do it exactly. he, he doesn't want to if you don't want to put it in the in the in the rate hearing that's fine but he wants a wants a yes uh, a go on, on that if you want you want to try to defeat it legally by going to town council, then, you know. We want to find well, out and who's Pradeep, can you walk me through your number calculation? Pradeep, I think he's asking you. Pradeep, can you yeah, walk uh, me through so, them? If you say 12,000. 1,200 customer out of 8,200, they are paying by bank accounts. That's it? Yeah. It's a very small number. That's, and that's 40 cents, Jeff. Yep. No, 4,800. Yep. John, big picture, it's $2,000. We have a $117 million budget. I just want to make sure it's what is being proposed is legal and can be done. It's not to defeat it. Pradeep just said so, it was $2,000. It's not a big deal. So let's make the motion. And if, if it is legally not bound, then you your team can come to us and then tell that, okay, this is the issue. Don't implement it until. Yeah. Well, right. one, we have okay. to yeah. check and see if you have the authority to do it. Two, uh, we are just talking about the water and sewer, so I, I don't know, you know, we have to be worried about other impl implementation. So implement it as, assuming they find that it's not illegal. And I'll, if that's your motion, I'll, I'll agree with that. So my motion is to uh, remove the 40 cents uh, checking uh, bank account uh, fees on the water and sewer payments if it is... Uh, in the preview of the Board of Water and Sewer. Second it. Let me hear the whole motion again from the beginning. <laughs> no, really, um, I want to hear it again. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces to this. Now you find why I hate really, having to say, say it over say again. <laughs> it's like, what did I, I say? You know, we make rules. We're a body that makes rules to, to protect the water system. We can, we're all volunteers. We make the rules, and that's what we do. We do the policy. Now, if that policy conflicts with the Constitution or something, then somebody can complain. And the courts take that rule 
and they decide you were right or you were wrong. But we don't wait for the courts to tell us what's right and wrong. We make the rule, and then if somebody complains, the court will take it and decide. So I think we're doing this kind of backwards. This is not how American democracy works. As you know, but Congress doesn't say to the Supreme Court, oh, do you think this law is going to be constitutional? No. Right. Well, they make the law, and the court will then adjudicate it. Thank you, Patrick. So we have a motion. Pretty made a motion, and Bill seconded. Uh, Jeff, you have any discussion, or are you all set? I think I've discussed enough for tonight. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fasanello? Aye. Mr. Mishra? Aye. Mr. Abbott? In favor of his uh, motion, yes. Mr. Fisher? No. Oh. Hassan Yeager, yes. So it's 410. Okay, now. Make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Okay, any discussion? Um, are we finished with uh We are. No, we're not. We're not finished. We're closing the public the hearing. There is Second. other business. Do you want to uh, talk about that now? No, we're or? going to close the hearing first. Do you want, it's not part of the hearing? No. So you moved to, is there a second? Yes. Okay. yes. Moved and seconded. Are you in favor of closing the hearing? Mr. Aye, Mr. yes. Pass and all. Yes. Mr. Mishra. Mr. Abbott. Yes. Mr. Fisher. Yes. Pass and Yeager. Yes. So that's 500. Zero, zero. So the last thing, you want to do the reorganization tonight or do you want to wait till next meeting? Oh, we should do a reorganization right away. And um, John, can we wait till next Roy meeting? Is the, I um, is the person who has to hold the election. Because you're the clerk. Okay. John, could I ask that we wait till next meeting? I got to go. I got to drop. I didn't hear him. He wants I, I don't think, I mean... There, there's no harm in waiting one meeting, why, Patrick. Why should we wait? I have to drop. I had to drop 45 minutes ago. I, I can't hear it. He, 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 he has, has to, to drop. Go. He has to drop. For, you know, he has to go for some. Okay. Some I don't day. know that it's, it's going to take long. Since no. I've been in the board, it's always been the first meeting. If you want to change that tradition, then it's up to no. the board. It's not on the agenda, guys. So. Uh, I guess we'll move that we're going to have a reorganization. Is that a second? Okay. Second. A second. Yeah. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Abbott? Aye. Fisher? No. Hassenager, yes. So 410. All right. So you're going to call for nominations. So, um, yeah. Uh, for the Board of Water and Sewer, um, I'd call for nomination of chairperson. Is there anyone? Wants to be chairperson. Uh, I, I, is the uh, nominations are open? The yeah, nominations are open now. Okay. Yeah, I nominate uh, Dr. Hassan Jacker as chairman. There should be other um, nominations too. Are there any other nominations? Any, any other nomination? Hearing none, I don't hear anything. Okay. So do we take vote? Oh, I see. So, there's, we no, need a there's vote. no other nomination. So, no other, so close the nominations. Close the no, closing the nominations now, and uh, we vote for uh, Dr. Hasenegger yeah. as a chairman. Uh, Mr. Patrick. Aye. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bill. Aye. Abbott. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Same. Uh, Pradeep. Yes. Hassan Yeager, yes. Now we have to have a vote for uh, the clerk. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we close the, uh, this process for nomination of chairman. Congratulations, Dr. Hesniger. He, he has to take over now. now. Take over and yeah. go ahead. Okay, I'll open nominations for clerk. I, I nominate Pradeep. Okay. Mishra. Any other nominations? Okay. Move to none. None. We'll close the close the nominations. All in favor of uh, Pradeep Mishra, Mr. Clerk. Hassanello, aye. Mr. Abbott, aye. 
Mr. Fisher? Abstain. Hassan Yeager? Aye. You want to vote? Yes. yes. Okay. All Thank right, you. that's uh, 410. All right, so we have a reorganization. Any other business before the board? All right, thank you all. Appreciate it. Motion to uh, adjourn. Yep. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Yes, Aye. 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 Abbott. Aye. Mishra. Aye. Fisher. Aye. 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 Aye.